name's Brandon. I went to TCU, Texas Christian University. I majored in accounting and minored in math. I graduated in 2007. When I prepared for college, I actually started preparing my sophomore year of high school. My dad and I sat down and we made a list of all of our top top colleges that I might be interested in going to and we decided to map it out and every summer took a road trip with myself and my cousins. We would go and visit different colleges and try to hit three or four in a weekend um, or during a week when he would take off and we'd just go down and just do a road trip and so we visited a lot of different campuses um, so we could get on the campus and actually get a feel for the campus and what it was like. Um, also did some research on some of the top business schools so I knew I wanted to go into business. Um, and so I started looking at looking and kind of basing them around region and on the academics that they provided. I knew I was going to stay in the state of Texas. I knew <laughs> my mom probably wouldn't let me get any further out of Texas. Um, and so, I mean, and that'd be hard to go. For me, it'd just be hard to be away from home because family is very important to me. So I wanted to at least be able to be within a distance that I could get back if anything happened. Um, and and so I just started narrowing it down from that. I um, actually TC wasn't even didn't even make the first initial list. It wasn't even on my radar. Um, I actually went and visited when my sister did a cheerleading competition there, and I saw the campus, and it was just beautiful. So I started doing research on it, and found out they had a very they had a decent business school at the time. Um, their MBA program was starting to develop, and it was getting better and better every year. And so I started looking into it, started visiting, and started kind of applying and looking at the different aspects of it. And it got, they made it to my top two between TCU and Baylor. Um, and then we just, whenever I went back for my final visits, that's whenever I could just finally tell. Um, but it was very crucial and very helpful to start out with a list so that I could kind of start mapping the pros and cons against each other. And then that way, when I got it kind of narrowed down, I could go back and do another visit so it was more fresh on my mind. And especially once I'd been, after I visited a few campuses, I kind of knew, oh man, I wish I would have asked these questions or I wish I would have seen this on that campus. And so I could kind of recycle that and come back if they made it towards to the next cut. Almost like kind of like in basketball when they do the March Madness and you got different rounds and you all you knock some of them out and you move to the next round. And so that's kind of how we, we approached it. And we just kind of got it down to where we had our final five and then we had the final two. Um, and so that's kind of, we based it on places I wanted to go, and then we kind of looked at the financial side and decided on some of that. Um, my parents, they told me not to worry about finances, and I actually got a lot of academic scholarships, so I was not I was able to worry a little bit less about the financial side of things. Um, but that still played a big part, because I mean, that's something, it, it's, it's an investment in your future though. And so I didn't want to shy away from student loans if I had to. Um, I know now a lot more about the loan process. Uh, being a teacher and have taught kids that are going to into college, we've looked at that college process and I've learned a lot more about it now that I wish I would have known when I was going into the college process. Once I got the campus, there was tons of things to do for fun. Um, we had intramurals, we had, there was Greek life fraternities and sororities that you could choose from. Um, I actually didn't go into any of the Greek uh, fraternities, um, but there was also a lot of social fraternities and sororities that people didn't know about that were mixed gender, but focused on different interests. Um, like we had some that were focused on community service, some that were focused on leadership, development, um, and different programs around the community um, in Fort Worth. And so there was a lot of different things and a lot of different aspects to get involved with. Um, our school, we did a, I think it was called a Howdy Week. And that's whenever they, out every organization underneath the banner of TCU was there and you could see everything was going on. It was actually almost a little bit overwhelming at first because you wanted to be in high school, you're a part of everything because you're in a smaller community in a smaller environment. So you kind of were able, to, the access was easier. But in college, it really gave you the opportunity to really focus in on what your true interests were and dive deeper into that. Because you're not, I mean, in high school, some of the organizations are, they feel like they're more of a resume builder for college applications. And so sometimes you feel like you're just checking certain things off the list. But there was always those ones that had more 
they piqued your interest more or they felt more close to your heart and that you're more passionate about. And that's where in college you were able to take that passion and run with it. Um, one of the organizations that I was a part of was one that actually got started up. It was a nonprofit and it was called Frogs for Our Future. Um, and so it was all focused about helping the youth in the community of Fort Worth, the Boys and Girls Clubs, and helping going in and remodeling things, doing some different um, programs, kind of like mentoring programs with them. Um, and sometimes we just go out and hang out with the kids. Um, and so it was a lot of fun going out there and being able to spend time, quality time with students that may not have people that are that consistency in their life, um, but also being able to kind of get with some of the group of people that have similar beliefs, similar values, and hang out and just experience life around from people all over the place. Um, I met people from all different kinds of countries, different states, um, and so it, it just kind of exposed me to all kinds of different cultures, which is one of was one of my goals before I went to college was to expand my um, my horizons and what I was exposed to because I love hearing people's stories. I love hearing about different cultures. Um, I grew up in a really small town. There was about four thousand people in it whenever I graduated and left, and so I was everybody was very like minded and there was a lot of base basic values. But I just knew that there was something more out there in this world. There was something bigger, bigger, bigger viewpoints, bigger experience, life experiences, bigger cultures. And so I just loved to get involved with that. And so I'm, I immediately met people from international. There was, uh, we had an organization that was International Students Association. And so there's uh, people from all kinds of different countries. I met people from um, Thailand, from India, from, um, I think there were some from England. I mean, all kinds of different different things of the Philippines. Um, I think I met somebody from almost every single state. Um, excuse me. <coughs> and so it was just a lot of fun getting to know different people that maybe didn't grow up where I was from, and getting being able to be exposed to all that different the different cultures and different viewpoints. And so at college, and. Most colleges are the same. They may package it different. They may come at it from a different angle, but there's so many different organizations out there. If you just take the time to look, there's something that's going to find your interest or they actually have in the student life department avenues and ways for you to be able to create, even create your own organizations. Like the one that I talked about, Frogs for Our Future, it was created when I was there. Um, it didn't exist until I think my junior year, they decided to develop it and I got asked to come in on that and kind of be part of the leadership team that developed it and we kind of grew that. And so that was very interesting and gave me an awesome opportunity for me to develop, not only personally, but also help give back to the community around me too. So when we're talking about finals week, it looks different a little bit everywhere, but um, I think our library went 24-7, so there was 24-7 access. Um, it normally is only stayed open until midnight so that people would get back in the, into their dorms and everything. Um, but it was 24-7. I mean, there was always people everywhere studying. Uh, we did have midnight breakfast where they, I mean, they served we had midnight breakfast where they served waffles, pancakes, homemade, I mean, everything homemade. Even the chancellor came out and made stuff for us while we, while we were coming into the school, into the cafeteria. Um, and it just, I mean, there was hardly any activities going on so everybody could focus on their finals. And everybody was just kind of helping each other. I mean, it was, it was nice to see that, like, because in high school, we didn't really have a lot of big study groups. It was more individual studying. And in college, that's one of the things that I learned was how to study with a group and how to really leverage the knowledge of other individuals. Because um, we're all there, you're all there to grow and to, and to become more wise and learn in your occupation and your field, whatever your major and your, your choice of study is. And so they're all, you're there for a common goal. And so you can leverage that because you only have the professor for a limited amount of time in the, in the week and in your classes but then it's left up to the other individuals in discussion and being able to help each other see different things and teach. And the more you can teach something, the faster you're gonna grow it and you're gonna actually be able to understand it and use it. It's not just gonna be knowledge that comes in one ear and then goes out the other once you take the test. It's actually stuff that you're gonna apply, which is what you're going to college to do is to be able to apply this to your future career. Um, and so to take that time to invest in it and to get into a group to where you can learn and you can study with others 
it, it not only helps you with the material, but teaches you the soft skills that you're gonna need outside of college in the workplace, because we can all have the knowledge, but you there's always gonna be people to work with. And so you, once you learn how to work with others and work with them in those settings, and you kind of go through those, those nights of um, pulling all-nighters and um, trying to keep it, nudging each other to keep each other awake, um, and focus on what you're studying because you, I mean at that time when I was in college social media just started gra grasping and catching on so there was multiple distractions and now I couldn't even imagine being a student with everything you've got now with all the YouTube, Twitter, social media, Facebook, all of that stuff going on. Um, there's so many, so many distractions and so that I means that we would have almost, a, our study groups were almost accountability groups, so we would turn off our phones or we'd leave our phones at the at the front and it's like, okay, no phones for two hours, so we want to study. Um, another cool thing about that though is that we had um, rooms that we could check out that actually had dry erase boards on at, for walls. And so we'd go in there and we'd just be writing and just writing all over the walls, all over, um, I think sometimes we even used the windows. Um, and we probably weren't supposed to, but it was dry erase markers, so it, it erased off the windows. Um, but yeah, it, so I mean, it was it was great studying with different people, and plus, then you could actually cut up and laugh in those breaks that you needed. Because when you're studying by yourself, it's just it's just always beating you down. And then, but when you have somebody to laugh about, it actually would make you remember on the test you're taking the test and you see a question, and then you laugh about what you were studying at that point or somebody said a joke or something and, it, and you just it remember you remember the information so dorm life there no matter the way you look at it there's always anxiety about that either people are looking forward to it or people are just terrified of it. and there's the good the bad and the ugly i mean that's all i can say it's old john wayne movie and it just encompasses everything. I mean, there's good things about living in the dorms, there's bad things, and then there's ugly things. I mean, there's things that you see that you'd never think you would see ever. Um, but it's it, the good is that you get to live with community and you get to be with people that are going through some of the same experiences. Um, I know at, at TCU right now, and that's the only one I can speak of right now, but I know across the country they're, they're doing this too. A lot of the residence halls are moving towards, instead of just grouping by classification and gender they're moving towards classification or classifying the residents based on um, interest. I know at TCU they do stuff like academics or sports or outdoors or I think there was even a, a wing that was just strictly about gaming like online gaming and so they all they had all these similar interests and so most of the time when you have those similar interests and, and passions you get along with those people and so it builds a better experience and better environment. Um, and so again, you're just expanding your network and expanding your friendships and expanding your views. So, so as you get into the community, you can, with similar interests, but, um, it can help expand your views, but also it helps you be relatable in a place you, I mean, you're in a place that you, you may not know anybody that's there. You may be far away from home. You may be, you may be feeling all these anxieties about not, not fitting in or not being there. But if you have that community of people that have similar interests, you can, create that bond just on that interest. And then that can expand into bigger friendships and make you feel a little bit more comfortable and being feeling at home away from home. <coughs> um, it's where most of you will probably learn how to do laundry. And it's okay if you mess up your laundry, laundry at least once or twice. Um, whites don't go with colors, just in case you don't know. Um, otherwise you can sometimes come out with tie-dye shirts or pink or purple or who knows what colors come out of there. Um, most dorms have laundromats in the basement and usually there's unspoken rules where if you're somebody's waiting on the the washer and yours finishes they'll usually put it in the dryer for you and then so they can put theirs in but just remember to set an alarm or set a timer when your, your uh, laundry is going to be done. So that way you can go down and turn on the dryer because if it just sits in there with wet all the time for hours, then you're going to have to wash it again. Um, other things, I mean, again, like I said, you see things you would never, never think about. Um, I mean, I've seen most dorms have quiet hours. Some are strictly enforced, some are loosely enforced. Um, so you never really kind of know what you're going to get. Um, but again, it's most people in the dorms are pretty respectful of space. Um, 
when it comes to your to your roommate, that's where a lot of the anxiety comes in because it's, do I know somebody that's going to school because I want to room with them? Do I not know anybody? Do I really want to go potluck? Who am I going to get? What they're going to be like? Are we going to get along? You have all these questions running through your head. Um, I went potluck my first year. Um, we didn't really get along but at first, but we sat down and had some conversations and we actually really impacted each other and we were able to grow from that experience. Um, he actually wound up transferring out of TCU, um, but we stayed in contact and we really helped each other a lot in some of our life issues. Um, and we kind of helped encourage each other to get out and to meet people instead of just staying locked up in the room. Because one, if we stay locked up in the room, we had to face each other the whole time. So we got to go out and meet more people. Also back to the roommate selection, a lot of schools will do orientations or they even sometimes will do camps for fresh, for incoming freshmen. And you can meet a lot of people here and they do those at certain times where you can still switch to another roommate. So if you meet somebody at one of these orientations or this camp and y'all really get along and, and think that you could live together at least for a semester, then you could you can switch and request that each other as a roommate. Um, again, it, but it's always nice to have that somebody to come back to the dorm to and kind of talk about some things, or sometimes you may have, like I said, they, there's common interests now, groups that they live together, so you can talk about classes, you can study together, um, you can even maybe help each other with some of the, the teachers or professors that you take, because you may, they may take a professor before you do, you may be able to kind of talk about their teaching style, their, their lecture style. Um, food in the dorm, that's always a questionable one because you, you got people that can cook and then you have people that may not be able to cook. They just have pizza all the time. Um, unfortunately, I have, I well, fortunately and unfortunately, I had family that would always love to send me food and they would freeze it. So then all I had to do was stick it in the oven and uh, warm it up. But I had to like, be chained to that oven whenever I was cooking stuff because if I walked away for five minutes it was gone it didn't matter if it was completely warmed up or not people would smelt it and they would take it. so um, just always be conscious of that if it's in a public common area a lot of people think that it's just common for or it's it's open to anybody it's free to them it's, it's food it's sitting there okay it's free to them um, now I lived on campus off campus on campus, you had a little bit. You were very limited in what you could have when it comes to food-wise. But off campus, you could you had your own stuff. Um, one thing that I always suggest whenever you first live with somebody for the first time with a roommate is laying down a little bit of some basic guidelines because you don't want to like I don't want to be like the food Nazi and say okay all this is mine on this side and all that's yours. But I don't want if I've got if I want corn dogs I buy corn, corn dogs and I'm planning on coming home and having a corn dog. My roommate eats the last corn dog, and then now I'm upset with them because they ate my last corn dog. So, kind of, I mean, treat it with some respect and not just eat them out of home and home and house or whatever. Um, I always used to go by the rule: if, if you finish off the box, then replace it. That way, that way nobody can get mad. But if it's the last thing, I always if it's the last item. I always text my roommate and hey, you mind if I can eat this? Because you never know, they might be playing it. That might be the only thing they get to eat for the next two days so they get paid. So you don't want to eat their last bit of food. And everybody's situation is different. So you may you may talk about some of that, you may not. Um, other things, the differences between, because that's one question is, do I live on campus, do I live off? I would always suggest at least one semester live on campus. It may not work for everybody, but if you're gonna go to a campus and you're gonna move away from home, I would suggest living on campus just because there's a good support that gives you, provides you with a solid support network and support group because there's an RA that's there that's kind of already been in your shoes, kind of knows the resources that you may need. They're also trained and they've been um, exposed to a lot of the issues that incoming students may experience. Not saying that everybody's gonna have the same experience, but there are some common experiences that incoming freshmen uh, experience, like, I mean, have, being homesick, um, having family events like family members going to the hospital and not being able to come back um, just did all kinds of different issues um, anxiety attacks depression just different types of stuff they're trained to do that and know all the resources that can help you and so they're there just to help you and they also will put on different social 
um, social gatherings and different events. Like I think we had, um, I'm trying to remember what some of the stuff we had like a game night or we had on when there was a big football game, we had Super Bowl parties with our wing or whatever and they bring in food. I mean, who, who can pass, I mean, a teenage male who can pass up free food and football. I mean, that's, can't pass that up. So, but it, it's a good way to bond with the other people again. Um, but there's nothing wrong with living off campus. And it just, it just depends on your situation, your circumstance. Um, so I know sometimes rooming and board can be a little bit more expensive. And so living in an apartment or in a house with other people that might be cheaper and more affordable. Um, but I would just say, just try to get it plugged into the campus as much as you can and give it a shot at, at the beginning. Um, Cause that's how you're gonna meet people when you're art. If you're living on campus, that's where most activities are happening. And so if you're living there, then you can be exposed to it and you can actually, the availability of those opportunities is a lot higher than if you're living off campus. Um, when I moved off campus, I felt a little bit le more unplugged from community life at college because I was, it took me, I only lived 10 minutes away, but I wasn't, I mean, some of the most, the funnest experiences that I had in college were just random nights, somebody driving by in the parking lot, I'm walking to the dorm, hey, you wanna go bowling? Sure, and we all piled into a little, I don't know, Nissan Versa or something, there was like eight of us in there, and we just drove over to a bowling alley and bowled. Um, and that, that wouldn't happen if you're living off campus. I mean, it's just, and, or I think we would have midnight volleyball games, and because we had, there were sand volleyball courts outdoors, and somebody'd be playing, and you just walk up and start playing, and you just meet, you meet people that you know for the next, three years while you're there in college or maybe even for the rest of your life. I mean, I know people that at those random games met their future spouse. And so um, it's just kind of cool to see them meet then and then they get married three or four years later and it all started because they just randomly met on a volleyball court at midnight. Um, so that's why I say that it would be a good idea to just live on campus for at least a semester um, because then you get exposed to those random events that you wouldn't be exposed to if you live off campus. A highlight of my college experience would have to be the, the leadership development that I was exposed to in the different organizations, um, getting to see the different people and their different uh, thought processes on things, and just being able to open my mind to a way that people think. Um, that really developed me, who developed, helped develop me into the person I am today and how I can relate to so many people. Um, and then it built connections. And so those experiences, like, I think the biggest one was I went on an international trip to Italy to develop a leadership develop, or a leadership exchange with the university in Italy and TCU. And so the people I met, I went with that on that trip, we had bonds and we still know each other to this day. Um, no, a lot of them live in different states, so we don't talk as often or see each other as often, but we still have that bond. Um, one of the things that I would do differently in my college process is I would look into some of the different availability and finances for, for college. Um, I wound up taking, taking private loans, and there's not as much debt forgiveness or programs after college, post-college, that help repay those loans. Um, and so I was kind of stuck paying most of those loans myself. Um, and if I would have taken federal loans or grants, grants are way better than loans because grants are money that the government's gonna give you for free that you don't have to pay back. Um, now there still are requirements that you have to meet every semester to maintain that grant, but it it's free money. Um, and so I just would have been a little bit more diligent in not only the financial aid process before college, but also during college. Because a lot of people think that you have to apply for all these scholarships, these grants, and everything before you go to college. And then once you do that, your, your financial aid process is done. That's what you get is what you get. Um, but I have friends that have proven that wrong. I mean, I, they went to junior college and got their basics done, and then they transferred in, and they they were a residence hall, uh, a residence assistant. And so they got their room and board paid for, and then they continued applying for scholarships while they were going to school. And it took them two or three semesters, but then they wound up getting their entire tuition paid for with scholarships. Um, they so they they had small loans that helped in the beginning, but then in the long run, they actually got the the aid that they needed to pay it all with scholarships, and didn't have to pay that pay that back. 
Um, so that's what I would have done differently is I would have been a little bit more diligent in my financial aid process. Um, and so that's that's what I would recommend for you is to go out and search different scholarships. And I know it can be a pain applying to a whole bunch of scholarships and it can be somewhat discouraging. Um, with some of my students, they apply to hundreds of scholarships but only got a few in the beginning, but then the more they applied to, the better they got at their application process and the more they started winning or started getting awarded. Um, and that process can start as early as a freshman or sophomore year in high school. Because um, there's some, when you take the PSAT as a sophomore, um, your scores on that PSAT, your, so, your junior year, actually are, um, that's what the National Merit Scholarships look at. And so you, but you can start taking the PSAT your sophomore year. And so that kind of gives you a good practice. That also gives you a good practice on the SAT because it's like 50 or $60 cheaper to take the PSAT than the SAT. It's not the full SAT, but it gives you a little exposure to it. And so it's a very good, um, I think, very good practice and a good way to get yourself kind of accustomed to that test. And, and just in case you have any test anxiety, that helps you kind of get a way to see it without taking the full thing. Um, also with some of that, if you have disabilities and things, you have to apply for the SAT. They can, they can give you some, um, some supplemental help on the SATs. Uh, but you have to, the, the application process to get those, um, those aids takes a little while. So you need to really need to, if you do have some of those aids now in your, in your learning, you can get them for the SAT, but you need to start applying and look into that so that you know from the timeline standpoint that you can get the stuff documented and submitted uh, within the amount of timeline that they need to be able to provide that, that uh, supplemental help and aid. biggest advice that I would give to a high school student if you're about to graduate my biggest advice that I would give to you is the one that I would give my students every day in my classroom um, when I was teaching and that is remember that every choice has a consequence so make sure that the choices that you're making are choices that you can live with the consequence I'm not gonna I, I never tell anybody to make bad or good choices because that's all on the interpretation and the eye of the beholder, per se. But as long as you're okay with the potential consequences of that choice, then I then I can support that choice that you're making. But just take that into effect that when you start making choices, because we make thousands of choices a day. So when you start making choices that impact further down the road, start making sure that those, the consequences that can come from those choices are things that you're okay with and that you can do. Now, if you're about to graduate and you don't have any plans to go to college or you're not sure what you're gonna do after graduation, that's okay. Don't stress about it. Because a lot of times in life, you have no idea what's coming up next. You have no idea what's gonna, what tomorrow brings. And so all you can do is sometimes worry about today. What I would say is right now, find out what you're passionate about, what gets you motivated, and start figuring out how do you get plugged into doing things like that. Is there a profession that, that that involves that motivation and that passion. And if there is, then okay, how do you get into that profession? Who do you know that is in that profession? And talk to them, what did you do? Just figure out and do some research and just figuring out how do you get into that? Um, I know there's sometimes, I, I mean, there's millionaires and billionaires out there that maybe didn't even go to college, but they're doing something that they're passionate about. And at the end of the day, that's where true happiness is gonna be, is doing something that you're passionate about is where that true happiness at the end of the day comes from. And so, I mean, I went to school for accounting and math because I love numbers and I love helping people with finances. I love just making numbers work. And so it's something that I'm passionate about. And so it really, at the end of the day, I, I mean, I had to go to college to get the degree to be able to do that. And so that gives me the, the backing so that I can stand in that occupation and be able to be successful in that occupation. Also, in my college experience, all the other extracurricular activities I learned from all the leadership experiences, all the volunteer work, all the mentoring that I did within the community, that helped me in my personal passions and how I love to help build people up. 
and I love to help them find their passion and get connected to that and be, be happy with life. Um, because success is not measured by a number or by a title. It's measured by your goals and what you want to be and where, where you want to be at. And so if I can connect you to your passion, then you're going to be more successful because you're going to be happier with your life. Well, thank you for watching Able Cafe, where we talk about real life, we get answers, and most importantly, we talk about college awareness because you too can be successful in life.